So long story short, we got some plants and didn't do a good job watering them. Solution, build a computer controlled plant watering machine. We can now check on how dry the soil is and water the plants from anywhere in the world. And it only took a day and a half to put together. Here's the core of the whole setup. This is a particle photon and it's basically an Arduino with Wi-Fi and a cloud platform. If you're tired of hearing about cloud this and cloud that, you're not alone. When I first got this, I didn't really understand the whole cloud deal and put it away in storage for a long time. But I have to say after trying it out for this project, I'm a believer. Next, we have an aquarium water pump. Obviously there are other options like tire pumps, but this one is pretty quiet and it's easy to find standardized tubing for it. We have a relay made by digital loggers. And this thing is a great piece of gear for any maker to have. If you want to control anything that plugs into a regular wall outlet, obviously you can't be running 120 volts through your little microcontroller. Instead, you get a relay like this and connect your microcontroller to this green connector on the side. When you send a high signal to it, everything that's normally off will turn on and everything that's normally on will turn off. Dead simple and opens up a world of possibilities. The basic principle is when the photon turns on the water pump, it'll push air into a jar full of water. The air will then push water out another tube to the plant. This jar was two bucks at the hipster grocery. All we have to do is drill a couple holes for the tubing. Our tubing seems to be six millimeters in diameter. And I think this is a seven over 32 inch drill bit. I think I just sent digital garbage to the new pixel. This is where being cloud connected starts to be handy. Without writing any code at all, we can remotely control our photon using the mobile app or website. Okay, so it looks like we have some pressure. Yeah, some loss. pressure issues. Lots of pressure. Yeah, there's air coming out of here. Yeah, okay. so we do need so, some. So, yeah, unless the water is lower, or if it's going lower, then it's gonna be there's gonna be issues. Right. So we don't have enough pressure to get from here up to the plants up here. Mm -hmm. so why don't we just put the jar upstairs? We found some yeah. pressure loss from where the tubing goes into the lick, so we're gonna use silicone sealant to seal it up. It's going to be kind of hard to apply without the... Not the prettiest sealant job, you can tell we're not professionals, but as long as it keeps the air from escaping, good enough. We have to figure out roughly how much water is pumped out if we turn the pump on for a certain amount of time. 
This amount actually varies based on how much water is left in the reservoir and probably some other factors, but we don't have to be super precise since we have the soil sensor too. Okay, so that was 15 seconds. Uh -huh. It's still draining. Yep. Moving on to the next part of the project, here's the soil sensor. One wire is for ground, one wire for power, and one wire for the analog signal. It has those three wires because it's capacitive, not resistive, which also means you don't need to expose metal to the dirt. Unfortunately, it doesn't come waterproofed. Everyone online says they use silicone sealant to waterproof the top part, but our silicone sealant is acid cure, which is not good for metal. You want the neutral cure silicone instead. Next best thing is to just wrap it in electrical tape, which will hopefully keep off any splashes. Okay, time to test the sensor. Again, super handy to have the Tinker app to check on the readings. And then set up A0 to the analog read. So it's on high. Uh, it's reading 3100. So what about now? 3100 about there. Yeah. Okay, so when it's not. Can you put it only up to the white line? Yeah. Now it reads 1530. 1530. 1520, 1523. So about 1520 okay. when it's uh, fully submerged. Okay. Okay. Here's a diagram showing where we connected everything to the photon. I had to substitute some parts, but the wiring is accurate. Theoretically, at this point, everything already works. With the particle app, I could be 30,000 feet up in an airplane and still read the sensor and control the pump. But there's still a lot more we can do here. To make the wiring a little nicer and less likely to pop out, we're going to create a little board that plugs into the bottom of the internet button. For the connection to the relay, we scrounged up an old ethernet cable and we're just going to use one of the pairs inside. A bit overkill, I guess, but it works. Now, onto the software. This is the real selling point in Particles Platform. We can program the Photon like a regular Arduino, but we can declare functions to be callable through Particles Platform. All we have to do is expose it using particle.function, and right after flashing it to the Photon, we can call our function by hitting an endpoint on Particles servers. We're going to define two functions, one function to run the pump for 5 seconds, and another to measure the current soil moisture. The function can return an integer, which is perfect for our use case. You do have to make sure your function doesn't take too long, otherwise the API caller will get a timeout error. In addition, we publish an event each time it waters the plant. We're not doing anything with that currently, but in the future we could subscribe to those events if we wanted to. On our server, we whipped up some Python code that queries the moisture every 15 seconds and stores it in a SQLite database. We reused some old code that we had sitting around to make a pretty Google chart showing the values over time. Once we've had a chance to monitor for a few days and collect some more data, we can automate the watering. Until then, we can just look at the chart and manually trigger the pump when we need to. If you're interested in building your own Internet of Dirt water pump, we put links to all the parts we used in the description below, along with some sample code to help you get started. If you want to see more cool projects, subscribe to our channel to see our new videos when they come out. Thanks for watching.